James Bevan is Chief Investment Officer at CCLA, where he's in charge of $10 billion. James, thank you so much for coming in the studio. Now, I remember very clearly an interview that you, you gave us a couple of months back um, when you said, I'm actually offloading some of the stock we own in BP for three reasons. Yep. Stewardship, the fact that they didn't pay dividends, which since they've resumed, but also the fact that actually this is a deeply undervalued, the share price won't go above your target price. Are we in a similar situation now? I fear that we're going to see a continuing discount to the net asset value of the company because, quite simply, there isn't a strategic view that shareholders believe, contrast and project forward where value is coming from. And when we contrast what BP has done compared with, say, uh, Chevron, the shrink growth strategy, Shell's focus on shale, BG's very clear mm -hmm. perspective of where it's going to grow, what it's going to make its money from, Conoco Phillips, Marathon, mm -hmm. all of these companies come out with very, very clear strategies mm -hmm. where shareholders could get a very decent handle on where value creation will come from. BP just hasn't done it. But James, this is really a country that it's completely still in transition. It's trying to sell off assets. It failed the bid with, with Rosneft, that alliance. It actually succeeded with Reliance. Why not give it a little bit of time? I mean, at £4.64, maybe it's, it's cheap value. Well, you know, we felt that the company should come to the table with a strategic review of future direction, its plan, its ambition, its perspective, right at the beginning of the current calendar year. They missed that opportunity. There was then the Rosneft deal that clearly wasn't going to go anywhere. I think that was a major problem for BP in terms of credibility. And they have not picked up the bat and said, right, guys, that was an error, that failed, here's where we're going next. I think the overwhelming majority of investors in BP, along with the rest of the oil majors, say we quite like to see a separation of the upstream and downstream activities. We think that's a good way of gaining recognition of value. We just haven't had that from BP either. But so what, it's a problem with the stewardship. Is Bob Dudley the right man for the job? Because actually he was the one who did the TNK BP deal, and then a couple of years later, he knew exactly what was in that TNKBP deal and still wanted to have an alliance with Rosneft. It, it was a really very difficult situation looking back because very clearly there was not going to be a smooth passage and I think it was unhelpful. The management didn't get all of the barriers out of the way before making any announcement whatsoever. I think the very least shareholders require now is a very clear enunciation of future strategy for the company. That's still absent. And dividend? I mean, they've resumed dividend, the, the, but it's pretty much flat. Uh, absolutely. And frankly, until the Macondo problems are behind them, it's very hard to see how there will be a progressive dividend strategy re-established. Do you hold any BP shares? Yes, we do. We, we are considerably but underweight in BP. We do think that there is significant net asset value. If you charge me with the, 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 the challenge of what is the net asset value of BP, it's yeah. clearly well north of 550 pence, a very long way north of the current share price. Okay. Why is there that discount? It is quite simply because there is total opacity, the company's future strategy. They're not growing cash flow. Growing cash flow, growing revenue is really important. So, James, what, when are you actually going to buy BP shares? If we, for example, have a share price of 480, Bob Dudley comes out and says, right, this is my plan for the next two, three years, would that be an incentive well, if you see what you if like? If the plan is credible and therefore yeah. if we see what we like, that's central. What we need to see, we need to see a strategy. We need to see a strategy that can be delivered. And what is very clear is you can't just have grand statements yeah. about we want to do this, we want to do that. We have to have some detail. And we've had the detail from the likes of BG, from Shell, from Conoco Phillips. Those are the companies that have come to the table and who have delivered. Now, actually, in a sector which is spoiled for choice, Mm. One doesn't need to go to BP and take those risks in scale. So do you own Shell and other... Absolutely. We are overweight Americans? Shell, we are overweight uh, Exxon, uh, we're overweight BG, just to name the majors. And to, in terms of the share price, I mean, I, I guess the problem also is that the share price for oil, the price of oil is going up, but it still remains quite volatile. It remains very volatile and there must be a significant risk that the price of oil comes back down again. After all, if one thinks about the moving parts, there is global demand on the one hand, but on the other hand, there is the whole issue of the supply dynamic and I think there is a reasonable chance that in due course the supply side says look actually we're prepared to pump bigger volumes at lower prices because we want more net revenue. BP do you see yourself buying shares in the next six months or no way? Well the only grounds upon which we would want to buy BP is if there was a clear enunciation of strategy and I think that if you don't take the opportunity at the results you really aren't going to do it. All right James thank you so much James Bevan there.